So yesterday we created a PCB and adapter, right? Okay. So today what we are going to do? So we are going to continue with that. Okay. So before creating a SAML connection, okay, what we are going to do? So we are going to like create a entity ID for the thing fed, right? Okay. So our identity provider entity ID, we are going to create it. Can you go to the system in the right hand side corner? So here in the left hand side, there is a server is there, right? Yeah. So here uh, you could see there is a protocol settings under the SAML 2.0 entity ID was there, right? So here, okay. Can we give, okay. So entity ID may be a URL or anything that is our naming convention only. We can give anything we want. Okay. It may be like a URL or it may be like a string or anything we want. We can create actually just a naming convention. Okay. So. We can give, I think, test type an IDP actually. So that would be the better option. So our, our ours is IDP, right? So we can give test type an IDP. So that makes sense also. Okay. Yeah. So click on save. Usually, right? Okay. I will give you one example. So usually, like all the organization which I was working on. Okay. So I have created with the like organization name iPhone the like I mean identity provider actually. Okay. So that is the IDP. Okay. For example. Let's say if you're working in, uh, so for example, I worked in one kind of a healthcare project actually. So that uh, project is like, I mean, uh, X and Y, Z or something like that. Okay. So, so what I did X, Y, Z, iPhone, IDP actually like that I have created. Okay. So like that also, you can, uh, every organization will follow the same kind of a uh, uh, naming convention only. Okay. So let's save it. That's all. So now we created a entity ID. Okay. So system server protocol settings okay yeah so now we configure the is it saved properly okay i i oh yeah now i think uh, yeah that's fine okay so now entity id is done okay the next configuration okay so we created a data store we created a pcv we created adapter now the next one is sp con connections actually okay so let's save it here and then uh you already saved it right on here yes Karthik. Okay, now can you go to the applications? So now the next step will be configuring the SP connection actually. Okay, so that is a SAML connection. Okay, SP connection is nothing but that is a service provider uh, connection basically. In short form, we are calling it as a SP connections. Okay, so click on the SP connections here. Yeah. Okay, so here as of now we don't. We, I mean we didn't create anything, right? So that is why it is showing as a empty. Okay, so let's create a connection. So first of all, we'll do the dummy connection, guys. Okay, guys, everyone follow this step. This is the most important one in uh, Pink Federate, actually, the SAML connection. Okay, yeah. So first of all, let's create a connection. Okay, so here, every time we need to use the do not use the template, actually. Okay, because all the connections will be different to each other. Okay, so if you click on the user template, right, can you click on only one template is available, actually. Okay, so here, if you choose, uh, choose that user template, yeah. So that is one default template available in the ping ferret itself actually. Okay. So that is the con some kind of a connector is available, but we don't require that. Normally we don't use that because all the application is a new kind of integration for us actually. Okay. There is no template available for those kind of a application. So every time we need to do it as a fresh, we need to, uh, we need to understand the recommend. We need to go as a manual option only. Okay. So then only our, we can also understand all the configuration, all the steps in the, inside the SAML connection actually. Okay, so choose that do not use a template itself. Okay, so we don't uh, need to skip any step actually. So that's why click on next. Yeah, so the next one is uh, here we are going to use the SAML 2.0, right? Okay, so choose the browser SSO profile. So for SAML 2.0, we need to choose the browser SSO profile. As I already mentioned, SAML 1.1 and 1.0 is also there actually. Okay, but more 99.9, .9, I mean, 100 percentage of the applications are not supporting uh, SAML 1.1 and 1.0. Okay, so why they are giving an update actually? Okay, so here previously SAML 1.1 was there like 2004 or something like that. Okay, so there might be some kind of a bugs or some, there might be some kind of issue was going on previously. So that's why they have introduced another protocol called SAML 2.0 actually. Okay. So that's why nowadays it's a latest, I mean, it's already like 17 years actually, 2005. Okay, so still there is no other version comes because it is stable actually. Okay, SAML 2.0, okay. So click on next. 
okay so here we are using the browser based application only there is a browser sso click on next so as i already mentioned the next step this is the most important one okay yesterday i have shown you right guys there are three ways we can able to provide the application information actually one is none that is the manual option one is metadata as a file one is metadata as a url so here you could see right all the options has been provided here okay so we will also see the manual and as well as the file option actually okay for salesforce connection right we will be using the file option actually okay yeah so first of all we'll go as a manual okay then only we can able to understand what are the steps it will be there okay and then what are the steps we, it will get skipped when you do the metadata actually as a file okay so let's choose the none and then let's click on next no nothing different will be there guys okay whatever you are going to put it there in the manually if you put it on metadata it will automatically take it from the file actually that's all the ping pen will automatically get those information from the file itself actually okay but nothing differences will be there for that particular application okay now here partners entity id so partner entity id means okay can you able to guess it what is the partners entity id anyone can able to guess it guys what is the partner entity when test hyphen idp so is it something hmm. similar to that like test no. hyphen sp or something no 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 that is the <clears throat> test hyphen idp that is our identity provider entity id okay so here we need to give the service provider entity id actually okay so now as of now we don't have any service provider right ready with that okay so first of all we'll create a dummy service provider actually okay so let's do test hyphen sp so uh, test hyphen sp one actually okay we can give that one so here we don't have any service provider actually okay so like uh, that's why we are creating one kind of a test connection okay first of all to test the identity provider initiated sso okay yeah so here connection name also maybe a uh, test connection number 1 or you can also give the same thing that's an, i mean both of them is uh, same actually we don't need to differentiate anything okay yeah so virtual server id is nothing but okay so this one is only used for a special occasions or like a special cases only for example let's say like um, the entity id you have given right test hyphen idp actually okay so for example the test hyphen idp okay uh, like let's uh, let's say you are working inside the uh, one organization and managing the ping credit for the organization and then there is already 1000 applications are there oh, sorry 100 saml connections already there actually okay which is using the our identity provider the entity id okay now one application is coming on okay and they are asking for a single sign on okay but they are saying that particular entity id okay uh, they are saying that entity id must be url actually okay so they are asking for the identity provider entity id as a url okay so can we able to change it actually can we able to change the entity identity id of our identity provider is it possible any idea guys any uh, anyone can able to guess it no okay so it's i mean we cannot be able to change it actually okay once you put it uh, once you put the identity provider entity id right okay so we should not change that one actually okay why because we should not change it means okay <clears throat> why we why we should not change it means like there is a problem will come actually because there is uh, there are like 100 applications are there like already in uh, using the existing entity id so if you change that entity id identity provider entity id means all the 100 application uh, uh, 100 saml connections will get fail actually okay simultaneously so it will be a global outage okay so once the entity id has been created we should not change it actually okay then how come we can able to procure this kind of a weird requirement actually okay so i mean nowadays this kind of uh, requirement does not exist actually because these are all old applications uh, they are saying okay hey uh, we cannot be able to provide the string as a uh, entity id in our uh, system or something like that actually okay so that that is the application capability actually okay that is the application compatibility issues and all actually okay so that we cannot do anything but how we can able to procure that kind of a weird requirement means we can able to create a virtual entity id actually okay virtual identity provider entity id so that entity id will be occur only for that particular application it won't work for any other application actually okay 
so how we can able to add it we can able to add it here in the virtual server id okay so you can add any kind of entity id here any kind of a value here and then this value will be acting as a virtual i virtual entity id for the identity provider only for this connection actually okay it won't work for any other applications okay so normally this is a optional requirement only not as a mandatory so if some application asking this kind of a weird requirement that uh, saying that uh, their application is not supporting the uh, like string uh, as a entity id from their application means we can assign some dummy url here in this uh, uh, virtual server id and then this virtual server id will be acting as a entity id for that particular application only okay yeah okay understood guys any doubts on this one the virtual server id yeah it's a optional only it's not mandatory maybe like thousand applications are there means maybe like one application will be used actually okay it's like i mean uh, one in thousand or one in 10000 only okay not in every day you are not going to do this one okay yeah understood okay now so the next one okay so these are the optional values actually guys the information about the application so if one application is coming on means okay if one application is coming and asking for an uh, uh, ping fed rate uh, uh, like single sign on configuration means okay so they will be having the company name they will be having the application contact point right okay so their contact details the team details the uh, contact person's mail address phone number and then the like a name of the contact person actually so we can get those details and provide it here so that uh, in future if you want to like i mean reach out to the concerned team member means we can able to easily reach out to them actually we can able to get that information from this connection and then easily reach out to them actually okay so these are the like configuration for the base url uh, base url is nothing but that is application url actually for example let's say like your application will have some base url right for example uh, what is the base url for the youtube.com any idea uh, i'm just asking generally so what is the application url or base url for your uh, uh, like i mean uh, youtube.com or youtube www.youtube.com it should be https colon double slash www.youtube.com okay. Okay. okay so what is the google dot uh, com website actually so base url i think if you are accessing in uh, us means what is the url guys is it dot co dot us www.google.co dot in for ist but i don't know for oh i think dot com only okay i think yeah yeah so here google.com is there right https colon double slash www.google.com is the base url that is the application url actually okay so that is just i mean if the application is having base url you can put it here okay if they don't have that is also not uh, rec i mean not required that is an optional only okay so that contact name contact number contact person email address right we can provide those details here one by one actually and then application will have the name of the application right so if it is a sales force means we can give the sales force as the application name if it is a, a service now means service now google uh, like gmail means gmail or uh, youtube means youtube like that we can able to give it there in the application name actually okay so these details are all just for information purposes actually guys not for any usage or nothing like that okay yeah so the last one the transaction logging okay so there are four ways we can able to uh, provide the log files actually in the back end actually okay one is no logging no logging means no nothing will be there in the back end for this particular application next one is standard standard means it will have the failure and then the success and then the failure events and why failure and why success so those kind of information it, it will be in a precise short and uh, uh, like cut and short uh, precise manner actually okay if it is enhanced enhanced means it's the same thing failure and success but it will have extra more information than the standard actually okay full means it will have everything the raw data okay so the raw data will be available on the full okay normally we will use the standard option actually okay why because like just imagine 100 saml connections are there actually okay so 100 saml connections the back end log files will get increase actually okay so every day for example uh, like one time i for testing purposes i did that full logging for i think 10 applications actually okay my log file went up to nearly 100 gb actually one file one log Size 
per day log file size went up to 100 gb on that pool actually okay so it will consume our back end server information only that uh, space only okay so that's why we won't use the full option that is also not recommended actually okay because uh, uh, like we won't be having uh, like 1 tb or uh, like i mean 500 gb or like i mean 2 tb hard disk space for uh, every server actually we will be getting only 500 gb maximum they will be giving 500 not more than that actually okay so we need to use those kind of a uh, Uh, disk space, like I mean, in a uh, in a proper way, actually. So that's why standard is enough. Actually, standard will have all the information. Okay, it will have the success and uh, failure with a precise manner. Actually, we, because we don't need to do anything about the raw data. Actually, okay, nothing is there. Okay, so nothing required for the raw data, basically. Okay, only standard is enough. Actually, okay, yeah. So choose the standard, and then click on next. Okay. so the next one configure browser sso so we are going to configure the so here we are going to configure the saml response actually okay so that is what we are going to do it okay yeah click on next okay so as i already mentioned there are two ways are there right one is two workflows idp initiated sso sp initiated sso similarly the single logout also there actually okay so first of all we will enable the single sign on then we will also do the single logout also okay So enable the IDP initiator SSO and as well as the SP initiator SSO, both of them. Yeah, click on next. SLO we will do it. The next connection we will do it actually. The Salesforce connection. Uh, do I need to save draft and then go to next? Ah uh, no no we can directly click on next actually. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. So our session lifetime. That is the response lifetime. Okay. So there are two things are there. One is request and response. Okay. The lifetime of a request and then the lifetime of a response. Okay. so once the saml request is uh, i mean once the saml request comes right okay it will be only valid for 5 minutes actually so within 5 minutes the identity provider needs to accept that request and then authenticate the user and then create the response actually okay similarly it will be minutes after 5 min 5 means that means like after the saml response creation right that response will be valid for only 5 minutes okay so within 5 minutes the response should be validated by the service provider and then allow the user to log in into the application but this 5 minutes it's like a an unrealistic comparison only why because normally uh, the normally have you you already saw right the authentication for the applications actually so how much time it is taking for uh, you to log in into the application so how much time when you type the username and password how much time you took to log in into the application actually any idea guys i'm just asking normally the gmail or like youtube or like microsoft teams or like facebook.com instagram or any applications social media websites okay so how much time it took basically so normally how much time it will take when you type the username and password 22 no, 30 no. 22 I mean 22 to 30 second that is also a high actually okay so normally when you do the saml right it will take only 5 seconds actually okay i mean 5 seconds i have given you based on your network connection okay so it will everything will happen on a nanosecond and microsecond only okay you won't even you won't even feel anything what is going on in the back end actually everything will happen at a second level or something so everything is happen at the instant actually okay so we will also see when we do the authentication right the next second once you type the username and password next second you will be inside the application actually okay so that is what this 5 minutes is just a default value actually okay so the validity of the request and response but it's like a unrealistic only okay but the default value is 5 minutes actually we should not increase that one but we can keep it as it is actually okay yeah click on next yeah so the next one is uh, we already know that is the saml response creation that is the assertion is nothing but that is a response right so assertion creation can you click on the configure assertion creation that is a response creation <clears throat> yeah so here what we are going to do there are three ways are there to send the response actually standard is nothing but okay so that is a plain text format actually okay standard means it's a plain text format everyone can able to see what is there in that particular response actually okay pseudonym is nothing but okay instead of sending it in a plain text right okay the saml subject will be go as a pseudonym actually okay the saml subject will be go as a pseudonym next 
transient is nothing but okay uh, pseudonym is nothing but it's kind of a uh, you know right uh, like yesterday you mentioned right anuya so instead of sending it in a proper way it will go as a assign as some kind of a unique value actually okay so it will like a kind of a masking okay now the transient is nothing but okay it will be acting as a identifier actually okay it is also going to use it as a opac value that is the temporary value okay instead of sending it the original value it will send the transient actually okay so there are three ways okay normally we will be sending only the standard actually okay nowadays the applications are not supporting the pseudonym or transient actually okay maybe they will be removing in a coming update or something like that these are all old mechanism actually when saml introduced right 2.0 when saml 2.0 introduced these are the mechanism they have given it but uh, nowadays they are all uh, we are not using the pseudonym or transient actually only the straight forward standard only okay yeah. click on next okay as i already mentioned saml subject is mandatory right so that is the saml subject is already there actually okay so now for this connection what are the other attributes we can send guys for this connection optional attribute what optional attributes we can send so this is the variable name we are putting it guys okay not the exact value it's just a variable name we are pro providing it here what are the other attributes we can send can we send the mail address in the saml subject and then uh, um, can we send the first name in the optional attribute only one attribute can we send first name as a optional one and then mail address in the saml subject okay so create a variable name for the first name here extend the contract okay so the saml subject is there right that unspecified is shown in the right hand side corner right the format so that is the format provided by the application actually so you can able to get this format in the metadata of the application side normally in the application they will be having this kind of a format inside the application configuration actually okay in the sp side okay so whatever they want to provide the format right for example if they have the unspecified means we need to choose the unspecified here also if they have the basic means we should have to choose the basic here actually okay so this information will be provided by the application side actually okay if they didn't give it means you can you can get that information from the service provider metadata actually okay you can get from the service provider metadata but here unspecified is the universal format actually whatever the application side they can use it unspecified will work for all the things actually all the format okay unspecified is a universal format actually okay yeah extend the contract you can use the first name optional attributes you can ignore it actually nothing required okay so just i mean that format and all not required for the option only for the like i mean saml subjects uh, we need to match it up uh, and that that is also if you choose the unspecified it will act as a like universal actually it will accept anything application will accept everything actually okay click on add here so we will be sending the mail address in the saml subject we will send the given name that is a first name in the first name variable actually here okay click on next two attributes we will be sending it one optional one mandatory click on next so now here as i already mentioned we need to map the adapter in the connection right then only the adapter will get trigger when you hit the saml connection okay so here choose the adapter here map a new adapter instance yeah so choose the adapter which you have created click on next as i already mentioned right we can able to get the attributes three ways right one is piece one is putting it in the pcv attaching it in the adapter and then using that adapter values in the saml connection that is a last step actually that is a third option okay and then that using that adapter i mean getting the attributes from the adapter itself and using it in the connection that is also the third step actually okay or we can also get that information that is we can directly connect the saml connection to the ldap and then use that i mean get that attributes actually right so uh, i think you you have it in the notepad plus plus right the three options actually so here getting it in the pcv attaching it to the adapters and then use that information in the saml right okay so that is a third step in the third check box that is a third uh, like radio button was there actually okay first two option will have the same thing guys okay in the left hand side uh, sorry can you go back to that uh, notepad so here first two option we'll use the same option that third option in the saml connection actually okay so here directly connect to the ldap the third option is the first option in the can you go to that 
so here first option is there right now that is a second option is there okay let's say if you are using multiple data stores actually okay so if you are using multiple data store uh, more than one uh, one data stores means we can use that one actually okay more than one pcv more than one data store means the second option we can able to use it there in the saml connection that is a second option is there right if you go back to the saml connection yeah so here the second option is there for more than one adapter sorry uh, more than one data store that means more than one pcv more than one data store okay yeah so here we are having only one data store i mean normally it's a one data store for all the organization actually normally that is no uh, they won't use a more than one data store for any organization okay because all the users will be stored in one database only right that's all okay click on next so this step is there right guys okay if you are creating under saml connection this step will be same for all the saml connection actually you will be doing the same step again and again and again actually okay yeah so click on add attribute source we need to add the attribute source right that means we need to get the attributes from the ldap okay so choose the ldap so give some source id and source uh, you can give anything okay you can use the same open dj excel just for our naming convention only okay you can also use the same thing in the description also yeah just for our naming convention only guys click on next yeah so what are the attributes you are going to get it guys from the ldap what are the attributes you are going to get it Username, email. Mm, no, not username. Only two things, right? One is first name, and then the mail address. Mm -hmm. right? Mail address. Yeah, only two attributes. Okay, so we need to give the base also, right? Uh -huh. Because we are going to do the search option here also, right? I mean, because after the search only we can able to get the attributes, right? I mean, without searching we cannot be able to get the attributes in the LDAP, right? So that's why, obviously, what is the search base? We already used it. The same search base actually. DC equal to example comma DC equal to Chrome. Okay, because with uh, here it's uh, basically it's doing the searching option only, right? Yeah. So here, what are the? I mean, it's a search scope is a subtree that is the binary search tree concept. Okay, every time it's a subtree only. It never changes. Okay. Now select show all attributes. Yeah. Then then only in the right hand side it will show all the attributes in the drop down. Okay. So what are the attributes we are going to select it from the drop down? Can you search it? Uh, you can type it actually. Mail, right? That's one of the attribute. Yes. Add the mail. Click on add attribute in the right hand side. Now, what is the next uh, attribute we are going to get it? First name. Yeah. What is the attribute uh, name for the first name actually in the LDAP? Given it's given name. name given. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Given name. Okay. Yes. Add it. Yep. Okay. So two attributes we already added. Okay. Now click on next. That's all. Okay. So now we got the attributes, but we need to give the filter, right? Okay. So the filter will be the same thing. UID is equal to dollar username. It's already there actually. You can uh, copy from bottom itself actually. Yeah. It will show the suggestion in the bottom. You could see right? Uh, dollar user. You can copy that one itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So click on next. I, we will see. Okay, there is a space or something. Is there any spelling mistake or something like that? Oh yeah. Okay. Anyways, click on done here. Okay. So now we added the data store. We got the attributes. Okay. We provided the filter and then the search base. Everything we provided. So now we need to map it, right? Okay. So click on next. We need to map it to the SAML subject and then the first name actually. So choose the LDAP. So there are many other ways also there actually. I we will be seeing this one actually. Okay, that we can also send the text value. There is a original expression we will be doing it. So that's that one we will uh, see it later in the after completing the SAML actually. Okay, yeah, separate class will be there for this uh, the source actually. Okay, so here SAML subject I think we can send the mail actually. Yeah. So first name is obviously given name. Okay, click on next. Yes, now we have successfully mapped, right? So Anya, you are understanding the concept, right? Till now, what we are doing it. Uh, others also, you are understanding the point, right, guys? Whatever we are doing it. 
So first we chosen the SAML 2.0 protocol. Next we have given the entity ID. No, no, don't go there. Don't go, don't go because we didn't yet saved it actually. Okay. So first we did the entity ID. Sorry, uh, SAML 2.0 entity ID we have given. That is a SAML entity ID service provider entity ID we have given. Then we started creating the profile. That is two things. One is SP initiated SSO, IDP initiated SSO. We chose a we chose the standard option, and then we also create one variable, right? That is a first name. Okay, we are going to pass it in the response, and then we start mapping the adapter to the SAML connection. We map the adapter, and then inside that we are uh, getting the attributes from the LDAP, right? Directly connecting the LDAP. And then getting these two attributes actually, and then assigning those kind of attributes to the SAML subject, and then the first name actually. Okay, yeah. So here, this one issuance criteria, it's a separate topic actually. Okay, we will be seeing it this one actually. Okay, in a future, in a near future, we will see it. Okay, maybe like on uh, Tuesday or something next uh, next week Tuesday we will see that. Okay, click on next. These are all like extra features of the pink feathered guys actually. Okay, the issuance criteria and all. Scroll down and click on Save. Uh, done. So now we successfully mapped the adapter, right? Now click on Next. Actually, okay. So this is a summary of the SAML response. So now we created successfully the SAML response. So now the SAML response is created successfully. What will be the next step, actually? So we gave the entity ID, and then we given the all the configuration. IDP initiated SSO, SP initiated SSO, also done. And then the SAML response also done. What will be the next step actually? What will be the next step? The most important step. So there are two steps are pending. One is ACS URL configuration. Then is the next one is SAML certificate configuration actually signing certificate. Okay, yeah. No, no. Here inside the SAML connection itself, we are doing it actually. Okay. Yeah, these are all like a only one component actually. SAML connection. Okay, so scroll down, click on done here. Okay, so now here the SAML response creation is done. Next is protocol settings. Click on next. So protocol settings only we are we are going to give the ACS URL, Association Consumer Service URL. Oh, can you click on next? Oh yeah yeah sorry sorry. Can you click on the protocol settings? Okay, so here this is this is where we are going to use the ACS URL. We are going to provide the ACS URL. As of now, we don't have any application, right? Let's give the dummy ACS URL. Choose the binding as post. Yeah, and then give the endpoint URL in the right hand side. Yeah, HTTPS uh, www.abc.com. Colon double slash www.abc.com. Okay, click on add. Uh, no need of index. No index will automatically assign. Actually, we will see that one. Okay, so first of all, we'll test normally without the index. Okay, then we will test it. What is that index actually? Okay, so index is nothing but okay. We can map multiple ACS URL. For example, if the application having two ACS URL or three ACS URL means they can able to identify by using the index actually zero, one, two, three, four, five, six like that. Okay, we will test it actually. Okay, maybe you can add one more. Okay, index one. And then binding post. Okay, https colon double slash google dot co dot in. Okay, so first of all, uh, default is the first one actually. That is a zero. Okay, automatically when you authenticate, okay, it will redirect to the default only. Okay, then you can ask me one question. Then how we can able to redirect to, to the next URL? I will show you how we can able to do it. Okay. When we do the testing process now, okay. Once we complete this sample, right? We will do the testing now itself actually. Okay, add it. So there are two ACS URL we configured. We can add multiple ten. Uh, I mean, we can add ten, fifteen, twenty. We can add anything. We, I mean, uh, fifteen. It's not that much. I mean, it's a. Uh, I mean, uh, like practically, it's not uh, possible actually. I mean, the uh, like one application does not have much kind of uh, URLs actually. Okay, maybe maximum five to six. That's enough. Click on next. Now there is an option called SAML bindings. Okay, so this is one of the small concept which is inside the SAML itself actually. Okay, so 
everywhere the saml request and response we are all passing it and then we are all uh, sending this response and then getting the saml request from the service provider right so how this information is being exchanged actually how the information is being exchanged from the request to the response and the response to the <coughs> sorry a uh, request to the idp and then response to the sp how we are all uh, how that information is doing i mean we know it's happening in the back end but in the back end how it is happening actually that is based on the binding actually saml bindings so there are four bindings are there one is uh, post one next one is redirect method so uh, do you know in java there is a post method and get method is there uh, do you know what is that one any idea like post method and then the uh, get method in java anyone knows java guys no i mean what the post and get methods we generally use for the api calls right no i mean api calls also we will be using this uh, nearly a same concept but it's little bit different okay so this is a http post actually okay so any idea in java there is a post method and get method so normally what uh, what is the post method will do actually oh uh, it requests the data from a resource mm -hmm. and the post it generally submits the data yeah, exactly the same concept so here redirect method is going to do the get method so it will get the saml request okay and then redirect the get, uh, request to the identity provider actually okay so that is a redirect method a uh, re redirect binding will do actually what is post binding will do means whatever the saml response has been created right it will post the response back to the service provider actually okay so this is why the redirect and post method is mandatory actually we cannot be able to create a configuration without the post or redirect binding okay artifact and soap uh, it's not required actually only post and redirect is required okay yeah so redirect is get method post is post method actually okay so redirect is used to get the request from the service provider and then redirect the request to the idp then post method whatever the request has been got from the sp right it will create a response and then assign it back to the sp actually okay so that is the redirect and then the post method click on next okay so this is what this is where the interesting uh, like i mean information we are going to give it okay now we have given the acc url everything is done acc url all the things are configured only one thing is pending what is that that is known as the saml certificate actually okay so here this is the policy we are going to use it okay so that is an option always sign assertion is there right okay yeah so that second option we need to choose is choose it as a mandatory guys okay because every time we need to sign the saml response by using one kind of a certificate okay so when you choose this option then only we can able to attach the certificate in the next step actually okay so choose the second option the third option i will tell you when we do the testing actually sign response as required you can also check that box the third option the sign response as required right the third option i'll i will show you when we do the testing now right okay for this saml response okay you will be getting one kind of a destination attribute in the saml response actually okay whatever the acs url we are passing it in the i mean we have configured right that acs url okay it will be there as a destination attribute in the response actually okay so that is optional actually we can also uh, uh, send it or we can also ignore it that is not a mandatory concept just for an uh, extra kind of option we are passing it actually as a destination so we can able to identify the application can able to identify okay this is the destination like that actually okay i will show you that destination attribute also okay now the first option now you can able to ask what is the first option actually okay so the first option is nothing but okay how the service provider is asking okay hey i need to trust your saml response right okay i cannot able to uh, trust your saml response simply so i need the certificate to trust you your saml response so that only i can able to allow the user to log in so how the service provider is asking the certificate signing the saml response right similarly we can also ask the okay hey sp okay how i can able to trust your uh, saml request in the first place actually okay i mean that is like uh, that is also an optional actually we don't require the saml request to be 
signed by using one kind of a certificate actually okay so there is an option we can also require we can also ask the service provider okay hey uh, service provider team you can sign the request by using one kind of a certificate actually okay so if you didn't sign the request okay then i will reject the request actually saml request like that okay identity provider will reject it actually okay the same concept how that uh, response is verified by using a certificate right that is a second option okay the first option is for i mean we are asking the sp okay i need to trust your saml request okay how i can able to trust your saml request actually okay i mean already entity id and then the acs url uh, testing is already there actually but still the third option to check also the saml sp certificate is there in the request or not actually okay if it is there then the ping feather will accept the request and then uh, it will throw the login screen to the user if the saml certificate is not there means then the sp uh, then the ping feather will reject that one actually okay so this certificate we can call it as a sp certificate actually okay service provider certificate but this one is uh, like optional only not mandatory okay yeah click on next we will also see this option actually guys when we do the salesforce okay now there are two ways we can able to send the saml one is in a plain text format one in a encrypted one actually okay so plain text means we will sign the saml response by using a certificate okay that means it will be in the plain text for format only the saml the whole response right it will be in a plain text format or we can also convert the plain text to, into a encrypted format actually that is known as a saml encryption actually okay so there is one more certificate we will be using it actually that is the application certificate okay so if the application is asking okay hey uh, ping fair team okay you need to sign your saml response and then you need to encrypt the saml response by using my certificate actually okay if that kind of a requirement comes means we can sign the saml response by using one kind of a application certificate this one is not done by our certificate this one is done by the application certificate so we need to get the application certificate and upload it here actually okay yeah we will do this one also okay as of now we will choose it as a none we will also see the encryption of the saml response click on next so we have enabled everything only one okay then we need to attach the survey right that is the last step it's pending in for this particular saml connection click on done i know guys this is a i mean this is like a long kind of a configuration but if you see it as a whole picture right it will take okay i mean uh, when we do three to four connection right okay the fifth connection you you will take it up in a five to maximum five minutes you will complete actually okay now i mean it's been like nearly more than eight years right for me so it will take only couple of minutes for me to configure the saml connection or not okay so that much practice i i got it actually okay yeah so click on next the final step will be the certificate actually okay scroll down yeah done yeah scroll click on next here so this is a browser sso we already configured now now the final step is the certificate actually configure credentials okay so here we don't have any certificate as of now okay so let's go to the manage certificates so let's create a certificate actually for our own saml certificate the signing certificate create a new okay can you give the ping feather host name so the saml certificate will be same as your ping feather host name only guys it never changes okay yeah so subject alternative name dns name use the same value uh, the ping feather host name only yeah add it so these are the other stuff so you can use it for the organization you can put test hyphen zogo or something like that yeah yeah it's already there i think we already created one certificate right that is a different one actually ssl server certificate yeah next one is organization unit you can also uh, pe uh, put people actually okay city you can use your own city state country you can use uh, you can use any details you want actually these are all optional guys actually that organization uh, organization unit so these are only the host name of the certificate matters okay yeah okay country is us yeah no no it's only us you have to give the country code yeah so the certificate uh, yeah okay the certificate validity days right you can give 365 days you can give 700 days you can give 1000 days whatever you want actually okay yeah click on next okay now save the save the certificate okay yeah now the certificate has been saved 
what about this do we need to make this the active yes. certificate yes yeah it will automatically come actually yeah yes okay so now here already certificate is configured done no no we don't need to export anything just uh, we can click on done there yeah. okay so now here we can also assign secondary also i mean secondary not required let's say like uh, uh, the <coughs> okay so let's say the primer certificate is going to expire in 5 uh, days or something or 60 days or something like that okay so at that time we cannot uh, wait till the certificate is going to expire right okay before that itself we need to renew the certificate right okay so we can renew the certificate and we can update the uh, update the new certificate as a secondary okay and then share the new certificate to the application team actually so they can update it what whenever they want to uh, whenever they want to update the certificate from the application side actually okay yeah so till the, till that certificate is valid right okay the uh, saml it will work properly okay if the certificate is expired means okay the saml will get failed so the signing certificate which you are having it you need to it is having the validity of time actually maybe like one year or two years okay so every one year or two years you need to renew the certificate uh, to create a new certificate actually okay yeah okay so there is an option called include right we need to include the signature okay we need to include it in the response right yeah you can also include the rocky in the signature also yeah because these are all we are putting it in uh, we are in including the certificate information in the response click on next yeah always certificate it's a rsa short 256 only guys okay yeah because old i mean old certificates are using sha 150 uh, sorry uh, like 128 bit actually but nowadays it's a 256 only okay yeah click on done okay so this is a final step okay click on next and then this is a summary okay so activate okay it's already activated that's fine okay so this is the saml connection which we have created if you scroll down to the bottom let's save this one so we successfully created a saml connection okay so here just click on the saml connection guys just click on that one no no in the left hand side okay so here there is one url will get automatically generated in the top right this is known as the idp initiated sso endpoint url actually okay this is known as the identity provider initiated sso url so if you click on this url it will take it as a idp initiated sso okay now open another tab in the chrome browser okay type saml tracer for chrome so this is the extension guys we can add it in the chrome browser okay yeah click on the first one the saml tracer guys okay add it to the chrome so this one is used to like i mean uh, trace the saml actually it got added okay yeah now can you go back to the pink ferret console and then hit the url so guys this is when you hit this one right first of all we are testing the idp initiated sso now you could see right guys wait a minute no no wait wait wait, wait. <laughs> okay so when you try to hit this url right okay the pink ferret is uh, triggering the adapter so this is the adapter actually okay html form adapter you are seeing it in the screen actually okay understood so this is just the form we created i mean like no it's a automatically created form actually okay yeah so this is a default form actually okay now here it is the login screen you are seeing it in the uh, like browser actually okay so this is a pink ferret generated login screen okay every time we need to use the i mean if if they are using the single sign on we need to use the pink ferret login screen actually okay so i mean all the application should have to use that one pink ferret is the one which have to throw the login screen to the user actually okay yeah so here if you remember we created one user in the ldap right yeah can you copy that uid and then the password here we oh it got logged in and then this message no, no, this, this is fine this is fine this is fine so i mean this abc is just a, i mean we don't know whether there is an uh, url is there like abc.com right <laughs> it's just a dummy url only right abc.com okay then so what about uh, the second one which we have given for no, the no, reader 
we will see we will see one by one we will test okay so where is the shamal tracer we got oh, i think you are sharing only that uh, no we enable shamal tracer right okay can you close this one okay can you close this browser okay yeah. okay open the shamal tracer again i think we uh, open the shamal tracer i don't know why it has been uh, not showing okay yeah anyways can you pin it to the browser yes okay now open the shamal tracer just click on the shamal tracer yes oh you can minimize this one okay now try to access the same url again now it will automatically log you in because the session is already there right okay so you could see the single sign on is working because the session is already there it is automatically log you in can you open the shamal tracer now okay you could see guys the second one that is a shamal response in the right hand side corner the shamal has been provided right can you click on that url anuya the second one yeah so in the bottom that is a shamal is there right guys click on the shamal in the bottom no no the header section yeah so here uh, can you copy this one and put it there in the notepad plus plus so this is known as a shamal response guys okay so we saw one example right the shamal response example okay so this is the i mean this is also looks like the same thing actually okay yeah this is the response we we can able to see it um, how we can able to see it in the xml format on here i think this one uh, i think maybe i need to open the visual studio code oh yeah okay can you paste it here new text file i think text file also no oh yeah okay so can you maximize this one so here this is the saml response guys can you go to the top so it will go come line by line so first one the response actually that is the saml 2.0 protocol there is a version in the second line okay uh, there is one referrer id is there okay so that is the third uh, okay that is the unique id for each saml transaction i mean it doesn't matter actually but you can just remember the id actually referrer id okay yeah and then the destination so what is the destination okay we are putting that uh, ess url right https www.abc.com that is the destination we are providing the saml response to actually okay then who is issuing the saml response the identity provider entity id right that is a seventh line okay test hyphen idp that is our idp entity ID because that is the one who is issuing this saml response actually okay scroll down these are all some signatures actually okay syntaxes which is available in the saml okay you could see there is a x509 certificate is there right 24th line that is your saml signing certificate actually okay so that is a certificate which we add it in the response right okay so the ping the application team will check if this certificate is there or not if it is there it will accept it actually okay yeah now scroll down so there is a status code is there right in the 35th line so that is a success in the right hand side corner okay it is showing the success right that means the saml response is success okay and then 42nd that is the issuer of the saml again that is the our identity provider entity id only okay so other, these are all some uh, <coughs> like these are all some uh, like uh, syntaxes for the saml response scroll down there is one more thing will be there in the 70th line there is a saml subject is there actually okay the saml subject is starting from 69th line okay that is a saml subject is starting okay and then in the 70th line what is the information we are passing it in the saml response you can able to see it in the right hand side corner okay that is your mail address we are passing it right it is there as a your mail address actually okay and then what is the recipient actually in 72 line okay that is the some uh, yes is url we are passing it. okay scroll down and then uh, within 5 minutes and with uh, like after 5 minute it is there right that is the maximum 10 minutes limit actually okay so that is the one okay and then who is the audience here that is the service provider is the audience okay yeah test type and sp1 that is a sp entity id okay next one is here that is a uh, other attribute we are passing it that is known as the first name actually okay you can able to see it in the 92nd line right so what is the first name here the value of the first name is anuya in the 99 98th line you can able to see it so this is how the saml response will get generated actually okay so this is one of the url we are passing it actually so now how we can able to put it for the other ss url we put it okay can you go back to the url again 
Yeah, can you go back to the ping fed, right? That is ID ping shader SSO URL, right? Can you copy this one, the URL? Okay, yeah, can you go open another tab, maybe incognito window? That's better, incognito window is better. Yeah, can you put it here? Yeah, Amazon, no, no, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, anyways, you could see right in the top. Okay, in the top, as I already mentioned, right? So start SSO.ping, right? I have shown you the difference, right? Between IDP initiated SSO and SP initiated SSO. The URL will get changed. Here you could see the URL. Okay, so this is for IDP initiated SSO. Okay, now when we do the SP initiated SSO, maybe tomorrow, we will see the difference in the URL actually. Okay, yeah. So here, Amazon. You know, right? What is Amazon? And symbol. Okay, ACS in caps. Yeah. I in caps, okay, DX. No, no, that is uh, lowercase. DX is lowercase. Is equal to one, right? I think one is the second URL we are passing it, right? Yeah. Enter. Okay, login. Provide your uh, username and password. Okay, click on sign on. It will show some. Okay, so here you could see right in the top, google.co.in it is showing. Okay, so this is how. Now you could see right, multiple ACS URL can be triggered by using the index value of the application. Uh, sorry, index value of the ACS URL we are putting. No, 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 don't, don't do it like this. Okay, yeah. So here you could see it is passing it to the google.co.in right. So what? Multiple SS URL can be triggered by using the index value we have provided in the ping fed configuration actually. Okay. So if you didn't provide anything, it will take the default value. That is the first URL we put it. Okay. If you provide the index, it will provide, go to that particular SS URL actually. Okay. Okay. Understood, Anuya? Now you can able to see the difference between these two SS URL, right? How we can able to trigger the multiple SS URL. This is only for IDP initiated SSO guys. Not for the SP initiator SSO. SP initiator also supports multiple SS URL, but it is not uh, <clears throat> it is not going with the index actually. It they can able to directly hit the URL actually. Okay, we will see that one also. Okay, yeah. Um, so how so, can I get the one? Uh, I mean the same URI so that I can save it. Sorry, which one? Uh, we have given the ampersand and like ASCI DX one, right? So. Yeah, you just copy. Uh, <laughs> no, no, you authenticated actually. Okay, so you cannot go back. Okay, so guys, I mean, if you go back and write the ping ferret won't work actually. Okay, because that is known as the click jacking. Okay, so whenever you authenticate it, you should not use the back button in the application actually. Okay, that is a click jacking. Okay, there are like a lot of click jacking, hacking are all happening on right. So the ping ferret will block that one actually. Okay, so Amazon, ACS. No, no, wait, 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 wait. I will put it in the chat. Okay. okay, guys. So you can give one, two, three, four, five, six like that actually. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Whatever you can add them. Even you can test it actually. Okay. After this class, right? Okay. You can create another connection. Test type and SP2. Okay. Get any other attributes like last name, yes, sir. Okay, or mobile number. Okay, that is a mobile. Okay, and then give any ACS URL you want to access it actually. Okay. Okay, if you give zero, the same URL, Anuya, just give zero. Okay. Copy that, paste it. You already pasted here. Yeah. Ambassad. ACS IDX is equal to zero. Enter. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is a, whatever multiple you can give any dummy URL, you can use it actually. Okay, you don't need to worry about the application endpoint actually. Okay, you can give any dummy URL abc.com, abc1.com, xyz.com, or like I mean, uh, even you can give facebook.com, okay, instagram.com, youtube.com, anything you can give actually. Okay, so just we are posting the sample response to those unknown, I mean, to those are URLs. Okay, they does not know what is this, and then they will give some throw error, something like that. So the Google Chrome it is throwing some error, right? Because that, uh, like, I mean, we are passing the response to that particular URL, but uh, the Google.com <laughs> does not know what is this actually. That is why it is throwing an error not found actually. Okay, yeah. 
Understood? Okay. Yeah. Any doubts, guys? Everything is clear now. All good, this Samal? Yes. 